Hello, everyone. How are you doing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, today I'm going to uh, give the talk how we scale a distributed SQL database to PV level. Yeah, uh, a little bit about myself. Um, I'm working for TidyB, and uh, I'm the I'm maintainer of TidyKV and also RocksDB contributor. I used to write a book about um, RDB internal. And uh, for the uh, past decade, I built TidyKV and TidyB from the scratch with other colleagues. And this is my GitHub and the technical blog. Yeah, this is today's uh, agenda. We uh, may, mainly have uh, four sections. The first one, I'd like to uh, briefly introduce the importance of database scalability for your business growth. And the second section, I'm going to uh, introduce a little bit about our product, TidyB, and uh, its adoptions. And the third part is uh, focus on the challenges we have uh, faced during uh, the past decade we are build, uh, when we were building this product and uh, when we uh, support our customers. And the last section is about uh, QA. If you have any question, yeah, we can you know, have a conversation. So let's move to the first step. First part, um, business growth is a great thing uh, for companies. Yeah, we have more users, more tenants, and we deliver new features for our customers, for our new, uh, new users and existing users. And uh, definitely there are more data collected from your uh, users. And from the technical perspective, there are might some like challenges because uh, for your application server or for your backend database, there are more connections, the more it means more requests, more data, and uh, yeah, more data need to maintain. So uh, let me give a uh, real example to, uh, to show this more specific. Bold is a uh, fast growing mobility company from the Europe. And uh, they have around 100 million users. Yeah, it's a great, great number and they provide service in uh, more than 500 cities. And uh, since the pandemic, their business has 400% uh, growth. Yeah, this is a great thing for them. But from the uh, technical perspective, they also um, faced uh, you know, some cha challenges. In total, they have hundreds of uh, terabytes to uh, PB level data volume. And, uh, Every day they will have uh, 100 service deployment. And uh, they need to uh, do 100, you know, uh, more than 100 database changes. I mean, the schema change or uh, data migration every week. And uh, uh, every month there are more than like uh, around five to 10 terabytes new data generated. And uh, they use MySQL. So um, you can imagine, definitely they hit the you know, single MySQL instance size limitation. And uh, for some large tables, if they want to add some index, it will take them, it will take them um, two weeks. Yeah, this has happened in their, in their case. And uh, backup, you can imagine how long it will take. Yeah. and. Uh, the result is they need to maintain hundreds of uh, MySQL instances. This is uh, their story. So uh, facing, when facing the um, growth challenger, the tradition, traditional solution is sharding. Yeah, um, you shard your database, you shard your applications, but this also means you need to have some compromise. Yeah, you need to rewrite your application's code. You need to you know, um, compromise some functionality, like if you want to uh, query some data across you know, the table. And 
you, you can imagine how to make a you know, consistent snapshot backup for your database if you have shared your data across uh, multiple nodes. All this is a you know, reality. We, uh, if, if we choose this solution, we need to face. So for the past decades, we focus on you know, solve, this, so, uh, solve these issues. We want to you know, build a SQL database. It's scalable. It means you can simply just add nodes for this system, and then everything can go. And uh, you don't have to change your application's code, and you can use all the SQL you want. And um, at the same time, with the, even there is a large amount of data, we can, you know, we want to, uh, we want to achieve the low read and the right tail latency. And uh, of course, the system is high availability. So this is uh, the you know, effort uh, for the past decade we uh, have paid. Yeah, this is where TidyB comes from. So what, what is TidyB? TidyB is an open source project, and you might be uh, familiar with TidyKV. Yeah, it's a uh, CNCF graduated project. Um, actually, uh, TidyKV was uh, created as the storage layer for TidyB. And there is a funny um, story about TidyKV open source. Um, actually, we open sourced the Thai Kui at 2016, uh, April 1st. Uh, you know, it's a fourth day, fourth day, yes. Yeah. Um, we, we don't notice that. Uh, after we posted this message to our, you know, social media, and everyone don't believe it. And then and we realized, oh, it's April 1st day. <laughs> yeah. And, this, and, and, and benefit of this is, oh, uh, even uh, several years has passed. I remember this exact date. And this is TidyB's architecture. It's uh, compatible with MySQL. You can uh, think it as a size unlimited MySQL. And uh, you, your application can connect to uh, the, the TidyB with a MySQL protocol. And the uh, MySQL's ecosystem tools, uh, you can uh, just uh, use it. And uh, TidyB is a disaggregated uh, compute and uh, storage architecture. And so you can uh, scale the compute layer or the storage layer, respectively. And of course, it's a high availability system. And uh, the PD is a, a metadata center. So uh, if you know TidyQV, actually PD and TidyQV uh, is known as the, the, the TidyQV. Yeah. And uh, meanwhile, we also have a uh, column engine to, which can uh, replicate the data from our TidyQV engine and uh, in real time. So uh, the TidyDB can query some like heavy uh, drilling uh, or heavy aggregation uh, queries. So let me uh, show uh, two use cases. The one is uh, Flipkart, which is the uh, largest e-commerce company in India. And uh, a few years ago, they, they were uh, search a scalable database for their you know, big billion day, which is uh, Black Day, uh, similar here, like Black Day here. And they want a database that can you know, just add some nodes to the system, and then the um, throughput of the whole system can you know, increase at the, uh, at the demand. So uh, several years ago, they come to us, and now uh, TidyB has, uh, with Flipkart, has experimented uh, two years, big billion days, yeah, and everything goes well. And this is a test report by uh, Flipkart. They uh, use around 40 machines to reach uh, more than one million QPS with the tail latency in single, uh, single, digit, latency, uh, single digit millisecond. And the other use case, uh, this is a large uh, cluster with uh, more than five, uh, 500 terabytes compressed data. And uh, uh, this is a um, online social platform. They have uh, three, more than 300 million registered users. 
And uh, what impressed, them, uh, impressed me is there is 1.8 uh, trillion records in single one large table in this case. And TallyB is also used uh, uh, in uh, some uh, North American users like uh, Databricks, Pinterest, and uh, Linking, uh, and the Plaid. Plaid is a uh, financial SaaS company. Okay, let's to, uh, move, move to our third part is about the challenge we have faced and our solution. Uh, from the architecture, you can see uh, the PD part is a metadata center. The third layer, we have uh, multiple Tycoon nodes. And the data is stored here, and, uh, and the metadata is uh, stored over a PD layer, which is a uh, cluster. And what PD do is, um, it needs to monitor the health of the whole cluster. If there is some like Thai KV is unavailable or has some uh, issues or network issues or disk issues, and then uh, the, the PD need to understand, need to, need to know it, need to recognize it, and then do the uh, balancing. Because data um, is replicated uh, across multiple Thai KVs. So single Thai KVs failure doesn't uh, impact the, 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 the service. And uh, the other way, uh, the, the other task the PD need to do is they need to cache all the you know, data range location and the leadership to, uh, to, to, to the uh, MAD data center. So if there are, uh, so the request come and uh, it can know uh, where the connection need to connect. Uh, because we, uh, you know, we, we partition the data that, uh, into like hundreds megabytes, megabytes uh, site level. So if there, if there are, why we choose such um, sites? Because we want to the, we want the schedule. It's, it's very fast. And if there is, you know, high workload uh, to one single partition, we can, we can, uh, you know, split it and uh, and. Uh, and, uh, and uh, rebalance, rebalance it. Yeah, and uh, PD also can monitor, you know, the workload of different uh, data ranges. This is, a, uh, this is a, uh, happen when Taikui, you know, um, has some request, and Taikui will uh, collect statistics from different data ranges, and then report all these statistics in real time to, to the PD center. To, to the metadata center, and then uh, the PD can you know uh, know which part is is hot, which part is you know um, is not, and then they can balance the workload automatically to make sure uh, the, the the workload is uh, uh, evenly distributed. So you can you can see there are a lot of things PD done. PD is is uh, taking responsibilities. So the first uh, uh, scalable issue we, we met is how we can make the metadata center scalable. So we, um, we, we, did, we do did some uh, optimizations, like uh, we can make the PD follower can also uh, serve the request. And meanwhile, so, oh, there is some issue with adapter. Okay. And meanwhile, because there are multiple tasks PD uh, is, handle, is handling. So we uh, disaggregate the, the, the PD into several services and deploy them into uh, dedicated resources. So uh, we, we can make sure each of them can scale uh, respectively. Like the TSO, which is a time, time uh, stamp service and the metadata management service, statistics, and the scheduling service. And I, as I has just mentioned, uh, hotspot issue is a uh, common issue for a large distributed system. If there is, you know, single node or minor, minority node take, you know, the majority work, uh, workload from the whole system, then this node can be the you know, bottleneck of the whole system. 
So how to handle it? We, uh, I just mentioned that we can collect uh, you know, the uh, statistics and the workload of different data partitions and report them to uh, the scheduling uh, service. And then the scheduling service can, you know, uh, can trigger the split and the balancing command to, to the, um, the Tyquin node. But there is also a uh, hotspot issue that, uh, the right hotspot issue that we cannot uh, you know, automatically handle. That is, uh, I will, I will show, show you a, an example. If the data is always append to one single partition, append to the tail, we have no idea. We, we, don't, we, 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 don't, we cannot you know, automatically split them and balance by this way. We cannot handle it. And for the read part, uh, we basically are the same with, uh, with, uh, with the right part, but there is some uh, slight uh, difference. For example, if, if there is a high throughput for a single data partition, it's already is small, like there is, a, there is a 100 row table, and it's very hot. And uh, our, you know, uh, we, we introduced a feature named the load-based split. And we can collect, uh, you know, uh, which row and which data range has, has a specific high throughput, and then we can uh, sub, uh, report this uh, information to the scheduling system and then split. Even there is, the, the partition is already small, like 100 rows. We can split it in 10. Each one has 10 rows like that, and then distribute it to multiple Tyquin nodes. Yeah, as a large system, there are hundreds of nodes, there are, you know, uh, millions QPS for the whole system, so we don't want to, you know, uh, if there are any issue, we don't want to, we, we, we want to know what is the root cause, yes? Which query caused the issue, or which node is the current bottleneck? So the observability is very important for a large system. And we did a lot of effort on this. And uh, you can monitor the uh, cluster level information, like how many nodes you have and uh, how many data, how much data of each node has and the resource usage, the latency distribution, and the uh, QPS. And even uh, we have the proportion of the different uh, statements. Meanwhile, um, if there is a hot issue, hotspot issue, I just mentioned, you can you can you can find out from the here, the CPU of a, of a single node or the I/O of a single node is very high. But how to locate, how to identify which SQL or which uh, table has this issue? Yeah, this is the next step. So we introduce the key visualizer, which can uh, show you know show the throughput of a different data range. And then uh, from this picture, you can see there is a bright line, which means this, uh, this state range has high throughput. And you can uh, tell which, which like, database, which table, and uh, which index cause this issue. Yeah. Uh, this table, this is a bad example, uh, just that I, I have mentioned. This right hotspot issue, we can't, you know, handle it automatically because it's a bad design for a, uh, in terms of, uh, you know, a distributed system. All the, you know, you can imagine all the right of this primary key index will happen in one place. So from the SQL's perspective, we can, you know, uh, monitor the, the slow queries in our system, we name it the top SQL, which means uh, this SQL, they consume a lot of uh, resources. And uh, we also have the SQL statement, which, um, which can show you the dominating the SQL query pattern from your application. Yeah, this is, uh, uh, you know, we, static, we statistics um, from the, you know, frequency uh, perspective. 
So after you have located, for example, you have located the, um, the, the, the top sequel, and then you can click here, and then we can show you know, the execution plan of the, of the SQL, and uh, you know, um, what the query plan, and uh, each, each step, how many you know, rows ha it has scanned, and uh, how many resources it has taken, and how, how much time it had, has, has taken. And the next uh, challenge uh, is the option, uh, operational challenge for a large uh, database, especially a SQL database. So you can match, I want to load a large amount of data from S3 into the system and solve my application. I want to you know, back up the whole system to make sure, uh, even we have multiple replicas uh, in, in IDB, but I also want to, uh, most of the customer want to back up the, their um, database periodically. And what if we add index for a large table? Yeah, this is all, this is all uh, you know, operational challenges for us. And for the load data, we uh, introduced the, the uh, dis distributed uh, execution framework, which can you know, um, translate the Parquet file, SQL file, CSV file into the TyQuiz uh, data format, access table format, and then ingest the to our storage layer. And you, uh, you, you can label you know, the compute node. So this heavy job can just happen on this node you have labeled. Let's uh, see a result, test the result. This is a uh, table from our a real customer, has uh, 55 columns with uh, five indices. And there are around uh, 100 terabytes data from the S3. And uh, they use 12 TiDB nodes. Each node has 16 core, uh, 16 V CPU, and it took uh, took around 31 hours. It's not bad. Uh, but I want to highlight is if you have more TiDB nodes, the total time can be uh, linearly reduced. And the next uh, is uh, adding index. It's similar as the import. Uh, we reuse the distributed uh, execution framework. And uh, the difference between import and add index is the data is already in, type, in, in, in the system in TaiKui. So we can uh, just uh, scan the data and uh, uh, generate the final asset files and uh, ingest to, to TaiKui. Meanwhile, there might be some new insert for this table. So we need to uh, do the incremental KV. Uh, I mean the, the, the um, index KV and the write into our system. And this is a test result from, uh, from, from a table with uh, 40 terabytes data. And we create the index with uh, 14 TiDB nodes. And uh, from the first line, you know, it takes around uh, one hour to finish the job. And you can see the last line. This is a, you know, a single node mode. It means the add index is just run in one TiDB node. It takes around 14 hours. Yeah, it's linear scalable. And the second row is about, you know, use one single statement to add five index at the same time. It took around one hour and a half. It's not four hours. Because all the you know, index is from the same table, so the scan just uh, happened once. And the backup is also a challenge um, for a large database. And uh, we want to make it scalable. So uh, from the storage layer perspective, each takeaway will, you know, um, for the full snapshot back, each storage node will up upload the snapshot asset files to uh, S3 simultaneously. And we also introduced uh, the read limit on our uh, Taikui internally, and uh, we can you know, limit uh, the, the resource and the throughput of each Taikui used by this uh, backup job, so we can make sure the latency of the online traffic is acceptable. Yeah, meanwhile, we also have the incremental backup. If you already have uh, take a snapshot for backup, 
And then uh, each Tyquin node will uh, incrementally um, upload the you know, uh, incremental change log to, to object, object storage. So let's uh, see a test result. We tested the uh, full backup for a large database. Uh, the first is has 100 terabytes data, and the second has around 300 terabyte data. And they have different you know, numbers of uh, storage node. And uh, each node has, uh, you know, for the first uh, cluster, each storage node has 2.6 terabytes data. And the total time of the full backup takes uh, 45 minutes, and the second test takes uh, around one hour and uh, four minutes. And uh, it's not three times of the 100 terabytes test because um, we have more storage nodes. And uh, actually, the total you know, time cost by backup is, uh, is, uh, um, uh, it has a relationship with uh, how much data each storage node has. Because from uh, the mechanism, you can see all the you know, storage nodes can do the work simultaneously at the same time. Yes. The uh, recent uh, you know, uh, challenge we are facing is a noise neighbor challenge because as a you know, scalable SQL database, our customers, they consolidate multiple uh, MySQL instance into their single one TileB clusters. And there, there, there might be uh, multiple applications running in the same systems. So if there is one application that uh, has large queries or heavy queries, and this may impact or affect other you know, applications. And also, there are the other you know, um, widely used scenario is SaaS company. We have multiple uh, SaaS company customers. They have uh, multiple tenant, and uh, each tenant may have different workload. So how to you know, make sure uh, there, this you know, noisy tenant, if, if there is, cannot you know, impact other tenants. So we introduced the resource control feature, um, which is a, a feature can control the user from a specific uh, uh, tenant or application. And basically, the idea is we have different uh, strategy from the compute layer and the storage layer. And uh, we introduced the resource group uh, concept. You can bind uh, multiple applications into one resource group. It means this multiple application share the resource in this resource group. And you, we also, you, know, uh, you, you also can allocate a uh, dedicated resource group to a significant uh, like KA customer or KA tenant. And from the storage layer, we use the priority-based uh, scheduling, which uh, we use M-clock algorithm to, to uh, satisfy the resource you know, allocation. And from the SQL layer, we use like SQL flow control for different uh, users, from different users uh, in different resource group. Let's see the test result of a, um, of a use case. The left part is we don't introduce, you know, we don't uh, apply the resource control feature. And uh, the blue one is uh, we simulated the order, the order applications. And the yellow one is the, you know, report application, which has a, you know, huge impact for the online traffic, you can, you can think. And the, the right side of the picture is about, you know, we apply the resource control into the system, and the, the other, you know, application is, uh, has no impact, and the latency is, uh, the tail latency is um, keep in 15, minute, uh, 15 milliseconds, yeah. Okay. This is all I want to share with you uh, today. And uh, yeah, I believe the time has passed 30 minutes. Thank you for your time and uh, 
if you want to discuss, you know, or discover how TidyB can solve your problems, you can scan this QR code. And uh, this afternoon, my colleague, Matthew, will, uh, from the application's perspective, how, you know, uh, how to scale your microservice with our, you know, scalable, stateful, backend, you know, database. Thank you. Any questions? Hey, thanks for the talk. Uh, I had a question on, um, uh, I mean, does TidyB also support replication? If you have a multi-region deployment, do you replicate automatically across regions as well? Uh, your question is about a multiple region deployment. Right, yeah. Okay. Um, from our, you know, practice, um, we have multiple TIDB cluster. We use CDC to replicate the um, changes across region. Yeah. Got it. And the CDC has to be set up uh, by the client, or is it done by TIDB? Uh, CDC is a component of a TIDB. Okay, sounds yeah. good. And uh, one more question I had was, um, like, the, what about strong consistency versus weak consistency? When you write, uh, does the data, I mean, the data read, does it follow strong consistency checks? Or, sorry, sorry? I mean, uh, how does consistency work with TIDB? Uh, like, uh, is the writes, I mean, are the reads strongly consistent? No, no, read and write. Uh, I know, but... Uh, yeah, read and write a strong consistency. Okay, yeah. got it. Cool, thanks. That's all I had. Hey, uh, first off, thank you for the talk, and uh, huge respect for what you all have built here. I work in this space as well, and this is you know, exciting, but also a very technically challenging problem. Uh, so the question that I have is about the PD part of that architecture diagram. Um, is, it, is it just like one... Uh, yeah, thanks for going to that. Is it just like one, you, I know you showed like one of them's a leader and the others are followers. Is that like one raft group? Uh, or is it, multiple, is it possible for there to be multiple leaders? Uh, right now it's a single raft uh, group. And uh, we are working on, you know, to offload the data into Taikui part, which can, you know, reuse a multiple raft uh, architecture. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. This yeah. can further, you know, scale over metadata center. Cool, thank you. Thank you for your question. Hi, uh, thanks for the talk. Um, you mentioned backup and backup time, and I was curious, do you have any numbers or ballpark on uh, what uh, restore times and what the downtime for restores would be in similar scales? You, you mean the RTO of restore? What do you mean? You, you mean the restore time? Yes, so when you yeah, have yeah. the backups and then something happens with the cluster, let's say, and you need to restore it uh, from the backup. Yeah, it, it's a similar, uh, because you know, it's just uh, the reverse, reverse um, proce procedure of the backup. Yeah, um, but the, the specific you know, number is not the same, but they are the same level. Okay. And Thanks. it also depends on... Um, how much you know um, incremental change log you have? Yes, it, it, it differs, but they still at the you know the same level. Right. So you have incremental restores as of you roll back. Or yeah. You um, if you if you open your full backup, it, it happens. You, you can daily or weekly, but also you need to open the PITR, the uh, incremental change log. You know. Yeah. Uh, time is over. I can I can chat with you offline. Okay, definitely. Sure. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I can chat ch ch chat with you offline. Definitely. Okay. <laughs> so so sorry for. for